Hello and welcome to another session of pre-ACT reading. My name is Jordan Boyd and I teach Advanced Placement U.S. History and Honors Modern World History. Step one, briefly review the questions. Remember that this has to be quick. Briefly reviewing the questions helps you know what to look for as you begin to skim the passage. Keep in mind that your goal is to answer the questions correctly and quickly, not necessarily to come away with a complete understanding of the passage or new knowledge from what you read. You are only there to get the questions they're asking you right. So that being said, take a moment and briefly review the questions. Now let's get started. Please take a moment, pause this video, and see if you can find answers to 13 and 14 now. Number 13 asks you about the main purpose of this passage, and the answer is D, to describe the key factors that led to the first significant strike of women factory workers. The poor conditions described earlier in the passage result in an eruption of protests at two of the largest garment shops, and that's going to lead to some unionization and lead to a strike. Number 14 says the third paragraph, lines 15 through 32, mainly serves two, and the answer is F. Give examples of the kinds of conditions in the garment trade that spurred workers to form unions. Really bad things are happening here, such as fire hazards, fines being taken advantage of by bosses and foremen, and workers, especially women, are understandably fed up with it and inspired to fight for better working conditions, which happens in the second part of the reading. Here are questions 15 and 16. Please pause the video now and see if you can find answers. Number 15 says, The passage most strongly suggests that the crowd gave Lemlich its attention despite her youth in part because they knew that she, and the answer is B, had participated in earlier strikes and endured serious consequences. Look to lines 51 through 53. She has a history of organizing and fighting for labor rights even at the expense of her health. The passage never says that she's a practiced speaker or elected leader in any sense. Um, I get why those might be attractive distractors, so to speak, but B is going to be the only answer that is directly supported by the passage. Number 16 says, based on the passage, which of the following best summarizes what Lemlich said after introducing herself at the November 22nd meeting? And the answer, of course, is G. She implied that talk was inadequate and urged the group to take action. If we come here to lines 57 through 60 especially, her call that a general strike be declared now is a direct call to action outside of just talking about it, like all the other speakers before her were doing. Take a moment, pause the video, and see if you can find answers to 17 and 18 now. Number 17 says, as it is used in line 6, the word natural most nearly means, and of course the answer is A, reasonable. It makes sense that unions would emerge in garment trades because conditions there are ripe for labor organizing. So natural um, and reasonable are going to be sort of the best synonyms here. And number 18, based on the passage, the author would most likely agree with which of the following claims about the history of the first female labor unions, and the answer is J. Immigrants who've just arrived and are desperate to begin making money and who speak little English, I'm looking at it right here in the third paragraph, they aren't always able to stand up to bosses and foremen to demand better working conditions. Those poor working conditions are then going to inspire workers to organize themselves and to demand better working conditions or else they'll all go on strike and quit working, bringing factories to a halt. Here are the answers all in one place, just in case you missed one. And in case you're curious, Clara Lemlich inspired a strike known as the Uprising of 20,000 in that speech that she gave that they talked about in the passage. This was the largest strike by women workers up to that point. She also, interestingly, lived until 1982. She lived to see the Reagan presidency for context, and she was an activist all of her life. She promoted the Delano Grape Strike and later even helped the orderlies who worked at her nursing home organize into a union. She's a pretty cool person. Thank you for not only learning a little bit more about history, but also for doing some pre-ACT reading practice. I hope that it went well for you. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time.